system because I okay. So today we're going to talk okay about elastic elastic uh, block store, right? Okay. Uh, Amazon Simple Storage Service, Amazon S3, Amazon Elastic File uh, System, Amazon EFS, um, Amazon Simple Storage Service Glacier. And the demos, this is something that you guys can watch in on Canvas, okay? There are videos there that you guys can watch at some time. The labs, we're gonna be working with Amazon EVS and storage solution for a case study, okay? Now, after completing this module, you should be able to identify the different types of storage. Um, the explain the Amazon S3, identify the functionality in Amazon S3, explain Amazon EBS, identify the functionality in Amazon EBS, perform functions in Amazon EBS to build an Amazon EC2 storage solution, explain Amazon EFS, identify the functionality in Amazon EFS, explain Amazon, Amazon S3 Glacier, identify the functionality in Amazon S3 Glacier, and differentiate between Amazon EBS Amazon S3, Amazon, Amazon EFS, and Amazon S3 Glacier. So we have the core services on AWS, right? We have, when it comes to networking, we have Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, VPC. We talked about that already. We have Amazon, we have Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, EZ2. We talked about that already. We have uh, AWS Identity and Access Management. We talked about that already. And now today we're gonna talk about the solution, the storage solutions in AWS, okay? Databases is gonna be another module, not this one. This is storage. But we're gonna see these four guys, these four giants uh, of AWS, Amazon S3, EBS, EFS, and Glacier, okay? Now let's talk about EBS first. EBS is a block store. Don't forget that block store. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of block store? Okay. So, if you want to change one character in a one gigabyte file, okay, if you have EBS, you don't need to change, or when you change that, what's going to happen in the background. It's going to change just the piece where that character is. Okay, that's with EBS. With an object, object storage like S3, right? S3 is object storage and EBS is block storage. When you change the file, just one character, the entire file will be updated. So it would take more time, right? To update the file with S3 than with EBS. That's what makes EBS more expensive than, that's one of the reasons that EBS is more expensive than S3, all right? Of course, S3 has some huge advantages over EBS, but it all, it all depends on the use case, okay? So change one block, the piece of the file that contains the character. That's the only thing you have to do, or that's the only thing that's gonna happen when you change the character. With S3, we already know that, right? Now, one critical difference between some storage types is whether they offer block storage or object storage, okay? That's one of the difference. This difference has a major effect on the throughput, latency, and cost of your storage solution. Block storage solutions are typically faster and use less bandwidth, but they can cost more than object level storage. That's what I said, okay? S3 is gonna be cheaper than EBS, but EBS is more effective, faster, more excellent than S3, okay? One of the- When would you use, when would you use EBS? Like EBS? from a database perspective or from a- Well, EBS is, 
is for EC2 instances. So remember that I said that EBS is like a thumb drive. Okay, I got it. You have to attach to an EC2 instance, right? S3 doesn't depend on anything. S3 is on its own, a standalone service, right? EBS will not do anything by itself. It's dependent on an EC2 instance or an RTS instance. It cannot work on its own. S3 can do that. EBS is not preferably used for logging, storing important information. S3 is. So the, the storage by choice to store CloudWatch logs or CloudTray logs or VPC logs or Elastic Bulb balance, Balancers logs, picture, images, and objects is S3. So block storage, EBS is just like a thumb drive. Like you, you attach to an uh, an EC2 and then you store information there. That's it. Once you detach it, it has no more uh, use. It's available, but it's not attached. It's not in use. Okay. Now block storage usually depends on a VPC. It has to be in a VPC because it has an easy, it, it is attached to an EC2. All your storage doesn't depend on any VPC. S3, what you have to do to connect to an S3 is just create an endpoint, a VPC endpoint, and then you can connect to S3, but, you, but S3 doesn't have to be in a VPC. So that's one of the major uh, differences between the two of them. Amazon EBS enables you to create individual storage volumes and attach them to an EC2 instance, right? Amazon EBS offers block level storage. Volumes are automatically replicated within, within its availability zone, okay? S3 is also highly available as well, okay? It can be backed up automatically to Amazon S3. You see all the backups to be restored, I mean, for EC2 to be restored, are logged, are saved in an S3 bucket. All the snapshots and the backups are stored there. So S3 is the best place to store information. All right? You would not do that in an EBS volume because once it is detached, it has no use anymore, unless you attach it again. Whereas S3 can stand on its own forever, forever more, right? So the uses include boot volumes. That's the one that comes with uh, the EC2 instance when you create it, right? And storage for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 instances. Data storage with a file system, database hosts, enterprise application. So you, use, you can use EVS for all this. Okay. Now, EVS volume types. This is something, guys, that you have to remember. They're going to be in your exam, most likely. Okay. I cannot guarantee that will, they will be, but I can tell you that they most likely be. Okay. So solid state drive SSD it's of course more expensive than HDD, right? So you have to remember these four types of, of volumes, right? General purpose provision IOPS, that's input output per second, throughput optimized and code. Of course, the more, the more far left, far right you move, the less, um, the less access is going to be. In the case of call, for example, that's for um, information that is not accessed frequently, okay? Now, the maximum volume size for SSD is 16 TB bytes. Don't forget that TB byte, it's more than a terabyte, okay? It's like, I think that one terabyte is like 1.4, I'm sorry, one TB byte is 1.4 terabytes. So it's, it's, it's a little smaller than a terabyte. As you can see, the four of them have the same maximum volume size, 16 TB bytes, okay? Now the maximum IOPS, IOPS per volume 
is 16,000 for general purpose and 64,000 for, for provision IOPS. And then you have 500 and then 250, okay? Now, what does it mean? It means that if, you're, if your application needs a lot of input output, you know, per second, if it is more than 16, then you have to use provision IOPS, right? If it is less than 16, then you can use general purpose or throughput optimize or code, whatever, whatever you, you, you have. Now, the maximum throughput volume is 250 MB bytes uh, for the general purpose, 1000 MB bytes for provision IOPS, 500 and 250. As you can see, coal and general purpose, they have the same maximum throughput volume. And then these guys, they have just, uh, this one doubles this one, okay? So that that can be show, uh, shown when we get to, let me see if I can just uh, access my account, a moment. And then I can come to my EC2 instance and then I can choose volume here. And by the way, guys, did you see my message on Slack where I posted the the, um, the code to create the EC2, the uh, Lambda function? You guys saw it? Yes. 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 Let's see. I think it's this one function, right? Is this the one? One moment. Let me let me let me, let me open that. Uh, I think is it's opening in Adam. Just wait until let me open it with Adam. Adam. Oh no, this is not the one. This is Linux. Okay, let me see if it is this one. Oh, this one is it. Okay, so um, I want to show you guys because it was inconclusive on on Wednesday and I don't want I don't like that so I'm gonna go to lambda and then in lambda this is the function that I created I'm gonna delete this so I can show you to you guys again the problem that I had it was that I mean was that I didn't put the correct code and also, I didn't use uh, the correct path to the file. Okay, so let me show you real quick. Okay, let me find the code because I saved it in uh, in my notes. Just bear with me a moment, please. All right. So let me let me open the terminal real quick. All right. Terminal. Okay. Reference. I want to do this real quick so you guys can see uh, what I did. So let me just create a new file. I just want to show you the code that I created. So um, it's right here. So this is a 
just a little piece of code in Node.js, right? So this is Node.js. I just exported the handler. I created a function here that has a callback function. And then a console Lambda's function successfully created using the AWS CLI. And then this is a callback function that says success. All right, that's what's gonna be printed in uh, the Lambda function uh, console. All right, that's the code that I'm going to load. All right, I put this inside of an inside, uh, inside a folder and I compress it because the Lambda function only accepts compressed, uh, compressed files only. Okay, so I'm going to create that Lambda function and then I will just create that same nano uh, my my new function. Here's an example. Okay, got this edge. All right. So now I'm gonna say this is an executable, by the way. Okay, executable. Bin. Bin bash. So I'm doing this. And then I say um, AWS Lambda, space AWS Lambda, right? Create function. And then I'm gonna write in a new line. That's why I put that backslash in space. So the name of the function is gonna be function name, right? It's gonna be my, maybe my new function, okay? I put that aside. Next line, I'm gonna say run run time. I'm gonna use node js twelve. That is that's the run time. Space always left backslash. And I say handler. No space here. Handler is gonna be my app. That's the folder and then index is the name of the file and the handler. Okay. Space backslash. And there's timeout. Let's say timeout is going to be five seconds. So present. Then say the memory size is going to be 256 kilobytes, or megabytes, I'm sorry. Memory size is a 256. Space backslash row. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste the row because this is a row that I created. That's the a row with with basic permissions from Lambda. Basic permissions. When you create a, a, a function in, in in the CLI, you can create a, a, a row that has basic permissions. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that guy here. That's the Amazon resource name, ARN. It's the one that identifies, it's like your social security. It's the one that identifies that role. Zip, they say there has to be a zip file, right? I see file B because it's binary. And I say this, I'm gonna give it a path where the file is, right? I'm gonna say the file is app that zip because it is um, compressed, right? Now I just stay the region where the function is gonna be. So that's gonna be US East one, okay, that's it. Now I just uh, save this. Okay. I run it. Okay. And then I cannot do it because I don't have permission for that. So what I have to do is command not found. Okay. Command not found. Let me give you permission to do that. Okay.
to get a command that found. Let me let me go there again. Um, what's going on here? Oh, I was roll two times. You see here? Okay. So I'm running now, and it's telling me uh, missing required parameter. Validation fail. What line is that? Line 10. Command seek not found. Oh, I forgot to put this guy here. You see, single details. Okay. Now I have another guy here. Uh, no directory. Oh, I know why. Because I put this in my desktop. So I have to navigate to the desktop. And now when I run it, it says no such file directory. Okay, why? Where did I put okay, one moment. One moment, guys. This is this worked, you know, like a charm on Wednesday. I don't know, and now it's giving me this. Your right. last script on a desktop? Let me let me move let me move it from the from the Okay, from the this guy. So I can I can move it from here. Okay, new function. Okay, and I'm gonna put it in the desktop. Okay. Okay. Now I move to the desktop, and now I can do this. I should get an arrow. Okay, it's right there. You see, now that function has been created. Now it worked. Now. I go now to my console, right? And then I refresh this and I see my function there. Where is it? My new function right here, okay? So I come here and then it said, you see the code that I just uploaded right here, okay? Now what I have to do is test it, create an event. So let's say my, my um, node event, right? Just node event. I can now use this. Not a problem. My node event. All right. Just camel casing here. So I just create that. And now I can test it. And it is successful. I see success here. You see? So it works. It's printing that. And it prints here Lambda function successfully created using a WSLI. That is the text that I log, that I consoled. Log, I console logged in my node.js uh, uh, code. Okay. So that's guy, that's how you create a Lambda function from the CLI. You can create a, um, an executable and then keep it there, you know, because if you paste this in your terminal, it will work the same, but you will lose that code because, you know, when you close the terminal, it doesn't exist anymore. Or when you do, when you execute another piece of code, then it will just uh, disappear. Okay. But by creating an executable, we can have you can still uh, have a hold on this and not lose it, right? And of course, with this role, you can use as many as many lambda functions as you want. You just have to change the name of the function and the name of the file, of course, that contains that, okay? Right? So that's all for Lambda, you know? Right? So what I was doing here, I was gonna come here to, it says, is it two and show you the volume here, the volume. And if you want to create a volume, you have here the general purpose thing, right? So for every 100, um, gigabyte, you have three, three uh, IOPS. So that's why you're going to have, I mean, for 100, it's three, so you're going to have 300, right? How much is 100 gigabytes? 100 gigabytes? How oh. much is to buy this volume? You mean gigabytes? 
No, just that specific volume. If I if I create that volume, I'm gonna have to pay Amazon, right? The volume, yes, you have to pay. Yes. Compared to physical volumes, what do you what is it? Approximately is less or the same? What do you mean physical volume? If I if I if I have like a, a server and and I buy it an SD as a SD. Oh, okay. Everything that you do in the cloud is going to be much cheaper than, than a physical. Much system. cheaper. Okay. That's yeah, what I mean. yeah. Okay. The cloud saves you a lot of money. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> 100. If you put here, the maximum you can have is 16,384. All right. That's the maximum you can have. So if you have this 84, then you have 16,000 IOPS, which is the maximum you can have here. You see? That's the maximum. If you go to provision IOPS, right? Then you can have up to, well, actually two is the one. This one you can have up to 64, right? This is the second version of this one, right? Second version is, you know? So you can have here up to 64,000 and then here you're gonna have uh, Maximum of 64,000, 64, um, right? And then you will need something called nitro based instance. It's an instance that has much, much, much more power than a regular instance, all right? Brand this, new. I'm sorry? Nitro -based. A nitro Is nitro based something new? No, it's not new. No, it's been there. Since I remember, mm -hmm. um, since I started in AWS, it was there already. But but this is a lot of IOPS. IOPS. Yeah. You know, sixty four is a lot of IOPS. That's a very heavy duty um, server. So you can choose here cold, right? And cold doesn't have any IOPS. Remember, the IOPS is only for these two, right? This is just throughput optimized and cold. Okay, so this is uh, in gigabytes, which is smaller than gigabytes. Don't forget that. Here it tells you the size of the EBS volume in gigabyte. Note that one gigabyte, it's uh, one thousand twenty-four to the power of three bytes, whereas one gigabyte is one thousand um, to the power of three bytes. All right. So let me see here. So a Gibby byte, Gibby bytes to gigabyte. Okay. So one gigabyte is One point seven three gigabytes. So, a gigabyte is bigger than a gigabyte, but this one has more value than this one because only one values one three is like similar to when I talk about value is that for some for example currency, one dollar is twenty four Mexican pesos for example, it has more value, but a gigabyte is a little smaller than a gigabyte. Okay. The same happens with the other uh, may, maybe byte is one is 0 0.001 in this case, you see megabyte, megabyte. You see, it's 1000, no, talk about megabyte, megabyte, BB, BB bytes, one zero point four. okay? It's a little bigger than a megabyte. Uh, it's a rather new uh, concept for measurements, for weight of, of files and things like that. But it's very common around, uh, currently uh, with many companies. Okay. So guys, don't forget that when you need less than 16,000 and you need heavy duty um, storage, then you use general purpose. If it is bigger than that, then you would need 
uh, a provision IOPS uh, EVS volume. Okay. So you hear this, you have the so use cases for this, right? So this type if rec is recommended, right, uh, for most workloads. Uh, it's a general purpose. That's why it says general purpose, because it's general. It, it's used for everything, right? EVS volume is durable. It's box storage device that you can attach to a single EC2 instance, like we said before. And you can use EVS volume as the primary storage for data that requires frequent updates, such as the system drive for an instance or storage for a database application. You can also use them for throughput intensive applications that perform continuous disk scans. So Amazon EBS volumes persist independently from the running life of an EC2 instance. That's what I'm telling you. They depend on an instance to, to operate, but they can be on their own, but they are useless on their own. You can detach an EBS volume and just keep it there in, in available, right? Like we do here. We have some volumes here, right? And they are in use and available. This one here, I have to immediately delete it because I'm gonna be charged for EVS volumes that are not attached, that are not being used. So I don't want to be charged for that. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to attach it, it's supposed to delete it. Okay, so guys, remember that on Wednesday, I had a Chrome job. Remember that I was stopping the EC2 instance um, at yeah. 60. I see 30 and it was being stopped. Is this the one? No, it's not the one. I deleted it today. But I could see it running today before I deleted it. So the Chrome job is working. I'm going to delete this guy because I don't need it. Right? I don't need this guy. Or I may stop it just in case I want to use it later. I will stop it. Okay. I'm not going to be charged for a stopped instance. If you are with a Microsoft Azure, you are um, you are being charged for a stop instance if you don't deallocate it. You have to stop it and deallocate it, okay? But in Amazon, with Amazon, you just stop it and then you're not gonna be charged for that as long as it is stopped. Stopped or terminated, all right? I'm not gonna be charged for anything here, which is a good thing. So it could be it could be for system boot, you know, when you boot your your EC2 instance, right? Virtual desktops as well. Well, Amazon has a service called Workspaces. It's a virtual desktop. Workspaces is a virtual desktop that is highly available, highly scalable, right? And you can have virtual as many virtual desktops as you want, and you can access them from anywhere in the world. It's just a virtual desktop. Okay, it's, it's the traditional, you know, virtual desktop infrastructure that you have in, in, you can have virtual desktops in your on premises, right? It's like detaching your desktop from your computer and have it in the cloud. It's a virtual desktop. That's the traditional one that people use in, in on premises. But AWS has this alternative, this uh, workspace service. This one is much better, much more excellent. And the good thing about this is that you can scale as much as you, as you want. That's the good thing about this. All right. So virtual desktop, like, like Citrix, where you have a yes. virtual machine. Do you create a VPC prior to building your virtual desktops or you just build it one and assign it? When you talk about workspaces? Yeah. Okay. You don't need VPCs for that. We don't okay. It's, it's a service just called desktop as a service right here. I guess it's only Linux and Windows, right? Um, this is for Linux and Windows, yeah, no Mac, right? Uh, Mac OS is another, it's an it's a different ball game, okay? Because you know, Mac OS is not a it's not as it's not a an operating system as, as Windows and Linux. It's just, uh, it's an outlier, you know, something different. 
the main, the most, the most popular operating systems are Linux and Windows, Linux and Windows. But you know that Mac is a Unix-like system. So whatever you're doing Linux, it might was as well work with, you know, with uh, Mac OS, right? Right. So, but you know, these guys that work with Windows and Linux, right? But most likely what works with Linux will work with Mac, most, most likely, okay? I have tested the version, this is a virtual machine that I have, I'm working with the VMware, because I was teaching Linux in the morning. And I have this guy, I can implement these guys um, in, in my Mac computer, the same thing. I don't even have to install a virtual machine. The problem is that, that tons of, uh, not tons, there are some commands that I can now use in Mac. There are Linux commands that don't work in Mac. Okay. That would definitely would not work in Windows. Right. But they, they, most of them work in Mac. So if you want to be in a Linux class or study Linux, you better install a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine to, to be able to work with that. Uh, because Mac was not, would not give you the, the, the full potential of Linux. Okay, so the good thing about workspaces is that it, it eliminates the complexity in managing hardware inventory, OS versions and patches, and virtual desktop infrastructure VDI, which helps simplify your desktop delivery strat strategy. With Amazon work workspaces, your users get a fast, responsive desktop of their choice that they can access anywhere, anytime from any supported device. Okay. You just pay either monthly or, or hourly just for this workspaces you launch. So you can give this, this to your employees if you're a business owner and they can use a desktop and you can scale as, as, as much as you want, right? Of course, you have to download the workspaces client. Guys, give it a try, give it a try. It's, you're not gonna be charged for this. So, and if you are, you're gonna have time to, to just uh, delete it or uh, disable it before before you, you, you're even charged okay so give it a try try workspaces and see how cool it is all right so low latency interactive applications you know if you need an application if you have an application that needs low latency uh, and and speed is a problem then this is a good guy for that okay? um, development and test environments that's good too now, provision IOPS, right? Critical business applications that require sustained IOPS performance or more than 16,000 IOPS or 250 megabytes per second, maybe bits per second. Remember, a speed, speed is not byte, it's bits. So you say maybe bits, not maybe bytes per second of throughput per volume. Okay. Now, that's, that's exactly the, this, what we saw before. All right. Right here. Um, what else do we have here? Sorry. Um, okay. Enlarge database workloads. So if you have a database that is continually, uh, is continuously being bombarded by requests and, and, and reads and reads and reads and reads, and it has heavy duty traffic, then you should go for highest, for higher, uh, you know, SSD ES volume. EBS value. Throughput optimized streaming workloads that require consistent fast throughput at a low price. Why? Because it's cheaper. You know, the ones on the left are more expensive. The ones, the ones on the right are less expensive, right? Big data, for example, guys, there, there are keywords here. There are keywords here. Large database workloads, okay? Sustain IOPS performance, right? Recommended for mo most workloads, okay? Low latency interactive applications, big data, big data, okay? And data warehouses. So if you have Redshift, this is the guy that's gonna work with Redshift if you wanna store information, okay? Because Redshift is a data warehouse. Don't forget that. Log processing, it cannot be a boot volume. This is a boot, a boot volume, but this one cannot be a boot volume. Cold, 
throughput oriented storage for large volumes of data that is infrequently accessed. That's why it's called cold. So that's easy. That's not difficult to understand. It's cold because, I mean, not many people use it, right? Or not many people access the information from this uh, volume, right? Scenarios where the lower storage cost is important. So guys, if there's a company that's looking for, uh, you know, looking to save money uh, on, on storage, that's the good solution, okay? But you have to combine, you have to combine. If you're looking for a, good, a, a cost-effective solution, but they have files that are accessed frequently, cold is not the solution. So you have to read everything, everything that the question is telling you, okay? Sometimes they combine, combine the features of a volume, and then you have to see which one is the one that fits the best, okay? And this one cannot be a boot volume either. So the, the guys, the HSD, HDD, uh, hard drive disk, or hard disk drives, I'm sorry, they cannot uh, use as a boot volume. The others do. The others, they can. Now, good thing about um, EBS volume is that they can have snapshots, which is point in time. It's a point in time snapshots, right? Like a picture of a volume, the point in time. You can recreate a new volume at any time. And when you have a new volume, right? So I can come here to the volumes, EC2 instances, right? So I can come here to the volume and then I can take a snapshot of this guy, right? Is, is this guy not encrypted? Okay, I'm gonna take a snapshot of the not encrypted volume and I'm going to encrypt it when I restore, when I create a volume out of that, okay? So I'm gonna create a snapshot here, right? And then I'm gonna name it um, October 2nd snapshot. Okay. Beautiful. <clears throat> so the snapshot is created. As simple as that. It's, I just got a picture, a frozen image of my, well, actually an image is always frozen, but it's an image of my of my volume in time. It's a point in time. If I add more information now, you know, guys, that that's not going to be um, in the snapshot, of course. Unless I back up the snapshot and probably I do some increment increment uh, incremental backups, and then I it will just uh, uh, save the portion that was not in in the snapshot. The new, the new portion, okay? So now it tells me here the volume, the, it has a snapshot now. So I'm gonna come here to the snapshot and I'm gonna identify the snapshot by the date. Well, it's been in um, pending status right now. Still 0% uh, done, okay? So I can come back and continue here. Encryption, encrypted Amazon, Amazon EVS volumes. So that's what I'm doing here. I just, I just took a snapshot and I'm going to encrypt that, okay? Now, when I create a volume, I'm gonna encrypt that, and the volume that I create, the new one is gonna be encrypted, okay? There's no additional cost, right? By doing that, no additional cost. Elasticity, increase capacity, change to different types, right? I can change to, from a general purpose to uh, provision IOPS, or I can change to uh, if you put optimized or to cold, whatever I want, okay? So I can change the type. So it's elastic, right? That's why it's called elastic block store, right? So still in 0%, I don't know why it's taking so long. doesn't matter, let's continue. Um, what else do we have here? Um, volumes, right? Amazon EVS volumes uh, persist independently from the instance. Like I said before, you can detach them and they still, they still, um, you know, are, are good, but they, they, they have no use because they're not, they're not attached. So they don't do anything, right? Now, all volumes are charged by the amount that is provisioned per month, okay? 
Remember, when you provision the IOPS and, and the provision, the, the size of the volume, you're gonna be charged by that monthly, on a monthly basis. IOPS, general purpose SSD, charged by the amount that you're provisioning in gigabytes, 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 gigabytes per, per month until storage is released, right? Until you detach the, 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 the EBS volume from the, from the EC2 instance. And, and best practice guys, if you have uh, an EBS volume that is not being used, delete it, delete it. But before you delete it, take a snapshot of the volume and store it in an S3 bucket. Or you can leave it here, where it is here. You see it's now complete, right? Now, from this guy, I can create a volume or I can create an image, right? Remember, this is a snapshot of my volume, right? So I can create a volume here. And now in the volume, I can just select and create this volume, right? With the default here, key, I can create my own key, but I don't have any right now. So I just select this and it tells me that the default master key that protects EBS volume when no other key is defined. That's the one that I selected. The key ID is this one. And this is the ARN, which is the Amazon resource name, right? And it's being uh, using the key in my account, right? So now I can just create the volume. And now when I just come back to the volume, I see that it is in the creating status, right? and is available right now. So as you can see here, I just created this from a, a snapshot, great. And now it's encrypted, okay? So now I can uh, attach this to an EC2 instance, right? So I can attach it and then my EC2 instance is gonna have uh, another, another volume that is uh, encrypted, right? So good practice. It's a good practice, a best practice to um, just to take a snapshot, which is free, and then delete the volume that is not being used, okay? Because you don't want to be charged for that. Magnetic, it was the one is before, charged by the number of requests to the volume, okay? This is the one that, also known as instant store, is the one that disappears when you guys um, delete the instance or stop the instance, it will disappear, right? Charged by the number of requests to the volume, provision IOPS, SSD, charge of the amount that you provision in IOPS, multiplied by the percent of days that you provision for the month, okay? So first you have the amount, and then it's multiplied by all the percent of days that you have used that during the month, okay? So let's say you use heavy on the weekends, you don't have a constant, you're saving money. That's why they're doing that? Well, what you could do is stop the instance on the weekends. Oh, okay, okay. And that's it. That's a good thing. Have a cron job, have a cron job that stops the instance after Friday, after, after Friday. Friday. And, and, and Monday, as soon as, as, as again. depending on, on when the traffic starts, at that that's time, okay. we start the instance. When you're not using instances, stop them. And you're not going to be charged for anything. All right? All right. Okay, so next. <clears throat> you charge for volumes that are not attached to an instance, but if the volume is attached to an instance, you're not charged if the instance is stopped. All right? So now, what is next? Okay, snapshots and data transfer. That's a good thing about, about uh, EBS volumes. Added cost, Amazon EBS snapshot to Amazon S3 is, per, of course, if you add it to an Amazon S3, you're gonna be charged, right? Storage in Amazon S3, is char you're gonna be charged for that. There's a limit, you know, in the free tier, if you go beyond the limit, you're gonna be charged for that, okay? Hmm. But it's super cheap, guys. It's super cheap. Why would you uh, store it in an S3 bucket? Because it's durable. It's durable. 
S3 bucket has a nine, is has an 11 nines durability. You know what it means? That means that you will lose one object in 10,000 years. So it's super durable. So it's, that's the best place to save things, important things. But when I say important things, I'm not referring to credentials, passwords. No, 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 no. S3 is not the best place for that. I think I, I already told you guys, uh, the best place for the eyes is Secret, Secrets Manager. That's the best place for that. Okay. This is the best place to save credentials. All right. You're going to be charged for that. Right. So per secret, you're going to be charged 40 cents a month. But what is 40 cents a month for your password? All right. Of course, you guys don't, don't want to pay anything. Right. It's, it's best if you. I mean, if you have your dad, your credentials for free, store for free, but you know, 40 cents is nothing for a company that has a lot of power, a lot of income, you know, good revenue. That's nothing, right? And for every API call, for every time that those credentials are retrieved, you're gonna be charged five cents for 10,000. That's crazy. It's five cents per 10,000, all right? And you have three days for free, okay? And then they start charging you. But, you know, if you can find another place that is secure, you can do it. But Secret Secrets Manager is super, 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 super secure. It's the best place to save credentials. That's an S3? No, 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 no. This is a different service. Oh, okay, I thought you, you were saying. Store, you don't store credentials in an S3 bucket. Okay. Not right. Is not recommended to store an EC2 instance like you do. For example, you may save your credentials in your computer, right? That's your computer. An EC2 instance is a computer. It's a virtual server, but it's a, it's a computer, right? It's not recommended to save it. Yeah, okay, it's just a software as a service. Yeah. Don't, don't do it as in a, don't save your credentials in a database. No. No DynamoDB, no RDS. Don't save, save them in a store manager, sorry, in secrets manager, or the second best option is parameter store with, with, manage, with system managers, systems manager, systems manager. Okay, that's the second best choice. And then you have here the parameter store um, right here, okay? Right? This is when you have a parameter and you can save things here you can give it a name, right? And the description, and then you can make it secure. That's, that's encrypted, right? And you can have the value here, the value, right? So the name can be here, right? The name, and you can have the value here, right? So very important. This can be, for example, it can be, this can be database, something like uh, Prudential database password, right? And here it can be pass, right? right? And then you create the parameter. Parameter must not end with slash, okay? That's what you told me, Amazon, why? Okay. So now I just keep parameter array system. Oh, okay, not a problem. Let me say production, let me say test. Okay, and let me just just create this. And now I have a test password, right? And when I click here, it's hashed, you see? And then I can do show, right? But anyone that tries to access this anyway, is gonna be hashed. So you have to use some workaround to be able to decrypt it because it's encrypted, right? So this is the, this, the second best place to store your credentials parameter store in systems manager. That is the service, systems manager, okay? Very good service to, to operate on many or multiple instances at the same time, super good. If you want to patch, you have 20 servers and you want to patch all of them at once, this is the guy, this is the guy. You can do some, some uh, run command here, run command, and just install a server on 20 EC2 instances. Super, super, super helpful. 
this guy, and it has um, commands created by the owner, by me, or by Amazon. All right. I, do I have anything here? By the owner. I don't have anything here. By me or Amazon? By Amazon. You see, you have many here for Amazon. Configure Docker. Maybe you want to configure Docker, Docker in 20 instances. This is the guy just run the command. And of course you have to create instances, right? Instances and just put them here so they can be in the manage instances uh, section. All right. right? So you have to install the systems manager agent on those EC2 instances so they can, they can be uh, discovered by systems manager. All right. So it's a good thing. You know, Amazon is a good, it's a nice, it's a beautiful world that you guys can explore as you advance in your certifications and you see that you're going to fall in love with it. It's going to be an inevitably um, true love. All right, so data transfer, you are not charged for inbound data transfer, but you're charged for outbound data transfer across regions, okay? Good, that's not new, let's continue. So keyways, takeaways, Amazon VS volumes, uh, they persist and uh, they're customizable block storage for Amazon EC2 instances. HDD and SD, SSD types, we saw that, we saw General purpose, provision IOPS, throughput optimized and cold, okay? Replicated in three in the same availability zones, uh, easy and transparent encryption, elastic volumes and backup, backup by using snapshots. Okay, guys, what are the three types that we have of storage of EBS volume? Three types, what are they? Mm -hmm. Uh, is this uh, Hilda? Yeah. Okay. Is the only student that I have here Hilda? I have Fine. 25 students in class. Anyone else? Thank you, Hilda. Anyone else can tell me what are the four types of volumes that we saw before? General purpose. General call. purpose. Provision call. Provision what? Provision what? High ops. Provision high ops. What else? Call. Cold and uh, output. Output optimized. Output optimized. Okay. Um, how many IOPS, up to how many IOPS um, does the general purpose operate? What is the maximum? Sixteen thousand. Okay. How about no. how about provision IOPS? Four thousand. Fifty-four thousand. How about how about throughput optimized? Five hundred. Five hundred. And code? Two fifty. Two fifty. Are we talking about are we talking here about megabytes or, or millibytes? Millibytes. Maybe bytes, okay, maybe bytes, good. All right, the demo you can watch it later, guys. In the, there's a, in, in, on Canvas, there's a, if you take a look at module seven, all the videos are there, okay? And they take uh, some time, so I don't want to spend time on that. I, I, I guess that you, you have a pretty good idea about EBS already, all right? So lab, uh, lab four scenario, working with EBS, right? That's going to be, you're going to show, uh, this slide is, is designed to show you how to create an Amazon EBS volume after um, after you create the volume. So you will attach the volume to an EC2 instance, configure the instance to use a virtual disk, create a snapshot, and then restore from the snapshot. Guys, you're basically going to do what I just showed you how to do, okay? Just create a volume, you know, attach a volume and create a snapshot from the volume. Okay. The final product is going to be Amazon EC2 instance, attach an EBS volume and create a snapshot. Okay. It's going to take you 30 minutes, but if you just pay attention to what I did, it's going to take you probably half that 
probably 15 minutes or less. Okay. So S3, one of the most important services in AWS. Guys, if there's one service that's going to be with you for your entire life, it's S3. Wherever you go, whatever certification you take, if you try to hide from it, you're wasting your time. It's going to be there forever. S3 is one of the most and one of the oldest services that AWS has. Okay. If you want to go for big data, S3 is going to be there. If you want to go for the solution cycle certification, S3 is going to be there. For the developer, S3 is going to be there. DevOps, you know, uh, developer, DevOps, uh, SysOps administrator, any, any certification is going to be there. S3 is super, super, super important in every certification. It's an object level storage. Don't forget that. EBS is a block storage. Oh. This one is a, is a object. It's an object storage. Whatever you put inside S, an S3 bucket is an object. Okay? It's an object. Right? It means that if you want to change a part of a file, you will have to update the entire file. With EBS, the advantage is that you only update the block where the modification is. In this case, it could be a character, just a piece, a word, whatever. You only update, or actually not you. Like I said before, the system updates just the portion where you're making the change. Okay. You will put your objects in a bucket Okay, that's called a bucket. In the case of Glacier, which is a storage, a class storage of S3, is a vault. Glacier uses vaults and S3 uses buckets. Don't forget that. A bucket is the container where you're gonna put your objects. Okay. That I store as objects in buckets Virtually unlimited. What is the, meaning, the meaning of that? It means that there's no limit for the amount of storage you can store in a S3 bucket. There is no limit, but there's a limitation. For every single object, you're limited to five terabytes, which is a lot, okay? Can you imagine a file that is five terabytes? That's a lot, right? That's the limit per object but the size, I mean, the bucket is unlimited. You can put as many objects as you want, but there's a limit per object, which is five terabytes. The difference between this guy and Glacier is that Glacier has a limit of 40 terabytes per object, okay? Which is much, much bigger than S3, okay? And it's unlimited too. So don't forget that, virtually unlimited storage. There's no limit as to the amount of objects that you can store. But every object, the limit is five terabytes per object. Don't forget that. It's designed for 11 nines of durability. Like I said, that is 99.9999999, 11 nines. So that means that you're never gonna lose in your lifetime, you will not lose anything in a stream of it, basically. Okay? Guys, if it is more than 100 years, it's good for me. I don't know about, I don't know for you guys, but for me, it's more than good, you know, because, you know, our life on earth is about 80, 90 years, you know, difficult to get to a hundred, but you know, 10,000 years, imagine, imagine that that's a lot of years. Okay. It has granular access to buckets and objects. You have, you have a policy, a bucket policy that either restricts or grants access to a bucket. Okay. So, it's very granular. It acts as a granular, okay? It offers a range of object level storage classes that are designed for different use cases. You have the Amazon S3 standard, okay? Standard, that's the one that we're using so far, okay? So far, that's the one that we're using, okay? We also have S3 intelligent tiering. This is very new, this was um, I think it was launched or created last year in October. It's rather new. It's newer than the other ones. This guy is smart enough 
to put the object in the right place. If the object is not being accessed frequently, it will put the object automatically in the S3 standard in frequent access, which is the third one. If the object is being accessed frequently, it will put it in the S3 standard, which is the frequently accessed one, okay? Now, here we have the S3 standard in frequent access, the one that I just talked about is IA, right? Amazon S3 one zone in frequent access, as you can see, is only one zone. It's less highly available than the other ones, right? It's called Amazon S3 one zone IA in frequently access. We have Amazon S3 Glacier, right? Which is a, an archiving service, right? Archiving, when you hear, hear the word archiving, don't forget that. And then Amazon Glacier Deep Archive is even deeper than Glacier, okay? Now, there's something called, in AWS, something called a life cycle policy, right? There is, uh, when you, for example, people don't access the files anymore after 30 days, you can have a life cycle policy, right? And you can put the files in a different class, okay? So I can come here, right? Let me upload a file here, Landa. Let me upload this guy. Let me see here. Uh, this guy here. This guy. So I'm gonna put this guy next. Okay. Next. Okay. So I'm gonna I can put this whenever I want, right? So if I put it here, long live data with changing or unknown access patterns. If you know guys that your object may not or may be accessed, you're not sure about that, then it's better to put it here. And then it will put it in the right place, okay? And of course, it's gonna cost you more per object, okay? So here or here, depending on how, how frequently it's gonna be accessed. So I can put this guy here, right? And then next, and upload it, all right? Now I can come here now, and then maybe uh, management, I can have a life cycle rule, and then I can say my new, uh, my new life cycle policy. Uh, you can put any name you want, all right? life cycle, okay? Apply to objects in the bucket, just in case, all right? Now, care inversion, yes. Add transition, all right? I can say transition from, transition to standard IA after 30 days, right? Add another transition. I can say transition to Glacier after 60 days, right? And then I can do probably, let me see, another one. I can put it in a, a Glacier Deep Archive after 150 days, right? And then I do next. And then I can say configure expression, camera version, and then after, after 365 days, right? Delete that, just clean after that, right? Clean up spire objects, delete macros, and incomplete multi-part uploads, okay? Okay, I understand that. I don't want to delete, delete markers. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine. This will apply to objects in your bucket. Okay. So now I have my um, lifecycle policy that goes from, uh, from, from standard to standard IA, to Glacier, to Glacier Deep Archive, and then expire. Okay. You see, that's how you create a lifecycle policy. 
And of course, I'm going to delete that because when it gets to Glacier, it's going to cost me. So Glacier is cheaper, is the cheapest, the cheapest um, storage class, but it's more expensive when you retrieve it because it takes more time, right? Um, let me see here. Uh, let me do this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm confused with Azure. It's it's uh it's less expensive because it's it's not accessed, and it's not more expensive for retrieval, but it takes more time for retrieval. The good thing about um, standard and standard IA is that it's immediately retrieved. Okay, be careful. Be careful with that. If the if this if the uh, the company is looking for a solution that gives them the objects immediately, then that's not Glacier, okay? That's not Glacier. That's either standard IA or standard, uh, standard, okay? Very important, don't forget that, okay? So Amazon S3 bucket URLs to styles. Remember, they can give you in the exam, they can give you several URLs and to confuse you. You have to know that this is the way that the URL is presented. In, 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 in S3 bucket, okay? So to unload your data, create a bucket in the S3, in the uh, in a region, right? Upload almost any number of objects to a bucket, okay? Bucket path, you style your endpoint. So S3 dot the region. In my case, it would be the region that I created in the, in the bucket, right? When I create the bucket, right? When I create a bucket, I can choose the region here and the region I want. So it's going to be whatever I have here, right? If it is Virginia, right? It's going to be, um, you know, US East 1. That's, that's North Virginia. If I come here, I cannot see here. But if I do this here, you see that Virginia is US East 1. Okay, that's going to be the code for that region. You have the name and the code, okay? And then amazonaws.com and the bucket name, okay? The bucket name can be at the end of the URL or the bucket name can be at the beginning. So it's not difficult to understand, not difficult. It can even, it can even be between the S3 and Amazon AWS or it can be, at, uh, I'm sorry, it can be between the HTTPS forward slash forward slash here, the bucket name or at the end, okay? So don't forget, S3 is always together with the region code, either at the beginning of the URL or in the middle. They're always together. And of course, this is going to be right after that. So this portion here, right? This portion here is the same as this one here. Same portion, same portion. The only difference is the bucket name. And the bucket name can be at the end or at the beginning of the URL. Well, not at the beginning, but after the forward slash, forward slash is going to be here. Okay, guys, remember this. Remember this. This is very important. Okay, very important. That's the bucket URL. That's the bucket and point, right? That is redundantly stored in the region. You see three copies here, three copies of that particular file. So media slash welcome dot, dot P, MP4, and it's this S3 bucket. And then you have in the facility one, facility two, and facility three, okay? The same, the same thing, okay? Just for high availability purposes, okay? So those facilities are and then within the same region, okay? So, I would say availability zones, okay? Data centers in an availability zone. Very important, three copies of that, okay? Scaling, you know, the S3 bucket here, you have one, one, two, three, four of one product, you know, you scaling here because you are adding and adding and adding and adding more, more uh, 
more objects. It will scale scale out. It will do everything that it, that's needed for you to have availability of your objects. Okay, super powerful. Can you do this with EBS? No, this the two different things. It's like comparing a Cadillac with a yacht. Two different things. They will both transport you from one place to the other, one over the sea and one over the over solid pavement. Okay, but they're different. They're different. Right. Access to data anywhere. You can access it from the um, console, right? You can access that from the command line interface, and you can access that from the SDK, software development kits. Guys, I can come here to my, uh, my console right here, and then exit, clear, and say, um, AWS S3, and then make bucket, right? And then I can say S3, this, and say my bucket name is ha 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 ha, okay? And then bucket has been created. I go there, right? And then I come here to S3 management console. I close this and I just refresh and I see the bucket ha 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 has been created. Okay, simple as that. I can come here again and just delete the bucket, right? So I can say AWS, S3, remove bucket, remove bucket and say S3. This is the, the way you do, ha 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 ha. Okay, so now I'll do this. The bucket has been removed. I just refresh this page. Right, refresh the space, and then ha 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 is gone. Okay, so you can manipulate that from the command line. Console is easy, command line, you need a little more uh, knowledge. That's the case for developers. Okay, common use cases storing application assets, you know, images, um, objects. Um, Websites, you know, whatever you want to do. Static web hosting, backup and disaster recovery. That is the place where you save the backups, right? Staging area of, for big data. If you're going for the big data or uh, data analytics, that's the new name of the certification. It was big data before, and now it's data analytics. S3 is going to be there like number one, all right? If you want to explore SC, S3 a little bit more, you can come here to the bucket and they see here management and properties. Properties, you're going to see that it can do a lot of things. This is a transfer acceleration. It's a super fast way to um, just, you know, deliver your objects to your users, right? Requester pays instead of the bucket owner, we pay for requests and data transfer, the requester of the data. Uh, preventing objects from being deleted, object lock, you can lock that. You can have versioning, right? I think I already show you guys how to read ver versions. This is super important for um, deletion. When you delete, uh, what, what, what is this? Um, what bucket DevOps, DevOps course, Junius Kiotano, do I have anything here? I have this guy. If I try to delete this guy, I have versioning, right? If I try to delete this guy, let me see if I can delete it. Uh, delete, delete, delete. I delete this guy, it's gone. Now, we're gonna take, if I just take a look at the version, show me the versions. I see that there is a version here. That was the one that I deleted, right? All the services, All the right? All right, let me delete this guy, all right? This is the one that has versioning. Um, I can delete this guy. And then if I take a look at this, there's a delete marker here, okay? This is for me to have a few more days to think about it, right? It is being marked for deletion. Now, how do I get rid of this? How do I get rid of this, okay? That's one of the questions for you, the CSUPS exam. You just delete the, the, the marker, delete it, 
And then when you delete that, it goes back to the where all the, the guys are. Okay. It's right here. It's back here. Again, I can delete it. And it disappeared. It disappeared now. Right? It's deleted. Gone. But it, as, it, as it has versioning, it will be marked here. It has a delete marker. The only way that I can get rid of this delete marker is by deleting the, the delete marker. And it, it will go back automatically to just the standard ones. Right here. It's back here again. All right. Good. So Amazon, Amazon S3 common scenarios, backup and storage, application hosting, media hosting, software delivery. Okay, so we have here, um, guys, six more minutes, right? And then uh, we finish for the break. After that, I'm going to continue because I want to finish this PowerPoint today. And then we're going to start scheduling the exams, okay? I'm going to send you the codes individually. And then, guys, you can, uh, we can schedule the exam. I have opened a channel on Slack that is called exam dates right here. Right? And who posted this? Okay, this is not for this, guys. Sorry, this is not for this. Otherwise, I'm going to get confused. Leslie, post this in the practitioner cloud practitioner um, here. Okay, this is the place so we don't get confused with this. Okay, this is only for the dates uh, of the exam that you're going to give me, guys. So I can I can just put it in my calendar and have an idea when you're taking what day you're taking the exam. Of course, we're gonna take we're gonna choose dates very close to the end of the course. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, listening. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So, so here we have four buckets, right? We are either, um, you know, hosting a website, right? It's your website, an application, software delivery, <coughs> backup and storage, and 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 you know, application hosting here. That's some of the scenarios. Amazon S3 uh, pricing, you pay only for what you use, including that's one of the, um, one of, you know, uh, one of the premises of, of, of AWS, you know, you, you pay for what you use, right? If you don't use it, you don't pay for it. So it's gigabytes per month, right? Transfer out to other regions is going to be charged. Any put, copy, post, list, or get requests, you're going to uh, pay for that. Right, so put and post are similar. The only difference is uh, that put kind of updates. It posts and updates at the same time. Copy, copy it is copy. List is when you read the buckets. Okay. Um, I think that we can list all the buckets here if we see AWS S3. S3 LS, we get all the buckets. So I'm just listing this, right? This all my buckets. You can do the same in your terminal. I get charged for an LS. From what? For LSing, I get charged. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, no, it's when you do an API call. No, this is not an API call. This is just listing, right? But when you're trying to list that, you know, bringing that from a, from a Lambda function or something like that, or people are trying to list the objects. I'm listing, oh, okay, okay. listing the buckets, not the objects. It's just the bucket listing. Of course, this is all possible because we configure the the CLI to work with with the with AWS. Okay. Otherwise, you it would not be possible. Okay. You're not pay for transfer in to Amazon S3. And when the transfer out is from Amazon S3 to an Amazon CloudFront or Amazon EC2 in the same region, it's free. Okay? Don't forget that. To other regions, it's always, you have to pay, right? But if it is in the same region, from S3 to CloudFront, which is a content delivery uh, network, or an Amazon EC2 instance in the same region, then it's free. Okay? Don't forget that. 
To estimate Amazon S3 cost, consider the following. The storage class type, if it is a standard, standard IA, standard one zone IA, if it is Glacier, right? If it is Glacier Deep Archive, if it is a standard intelligent tiering, you know, depending on the class, right? So standard storage is designed for 11 nines of durability and four nines of availability. Don't forget these numbers. It's 99.9999, 11 nines, and this one is 99.99, okay? That's the availability. 99.99 availability and 11 nines of durability, okay? Now this one has S3 standard infrequent access IA, is has an 11 nines of durability and it has three nines of availability. That is 99.9, okay? So it's just one less nine of this one, okay? Amount of, st uh, of storage, the number of size of objects, right? The bigger the object, the more you're gonna be charged, right? The more, the, the, the more uh, objects you have, the more you're gonna be charged. Requests, you know, how many API calls, right? The number of types of requests, if it is a get, a put, or a copy, right? Type of request, different rates, rates for get, request and other requests, depending on what you're getting. When you say get, it's just read. You're reading, you're getting the object, right? Data transfer. Pricing is based on the amount of data that is transferred out of this Amazon S3 region. That makes sense, right? And data transfer is in, is in, is free, but you incur charges for data that is transferred out, okay? That makes sense. It depends on the amount of data when it goes out, all right? Don't forget that transfer out is free if it is from S3 to a CloudFront, it's the CloudFront or to an Amazon EC2 instance in the same region. Don't forget that, okay? Very important. Okay, almost there. Amazon S3 is a fully managed cloud storage uh, storage service, fully managed. So guys, the only thing you have to do is just upload your, your objects, right? And, and and configure the bucket. It's fully managed. Everything behind in the online line in, uh, infrastructure, you don't have to do anything, right? You can store a virtually unlimited amount of objects. You pay for only what you use. You can access Amazon S3 at any, at any time from anywhere through a URL, okay? Through a URL. And if you want a particular number of people to use that, that URL, you can have a signed link and that has an expiration date, okay? And people can access that link with a specific, within a specific time, okay? Amazon S3 offers rich security controls, okay? So guys, before we get into Amazon Elastic File System, let's break for 10 minutes. And I'll see you back here at 7-11. Do you have any questions, guys, before we go? No? Maybe? Yes? Okay. I'll see you then in 10 minutes, 7-12.
Okay, guys, let's continue. So we have the, um, the Amazon Elastic File System. Uh, this is a highly available guide, right? It's, uh, it provides simple, scalable, right? Simple, scalable, um, Elastify storage for use with AWS services and on-premise resources. And it offers a simple interface that enables you to create and configure the file system quickly and easily. So just give me a second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. So Amazon EFS is built is built to dynamically scale on demand without disrupting applications. It will grow and shrink, sorry. So it will grow and shrink and shrink automatically as you add and remove files. It is designed so that your application can have storage they need when they need it. Okay, so it's a file storage in the cloud, in the AWS cloud. It works well with for big data and analytics, media processing uh, workflows, content management, web serving, and home directories. Petabyte scale, so it's super, 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 super big, low latency file system. So that's a key word here, file system, right? The other key word that you guys have to remember is shared. Share, why? Because three, four, five, six, seven EC2 instances can share the same system, the same file system. Remember that with EBS, it's one, it's one EC2 instance per EBS, right? Each EBS can only be attached to one EC2 instance, right? But in the case of this file system, you can mount that on a network interface, right? And have that in every availability zone and then connect those EC2 instance, instances to the file system. It has elastic capacity. It support network file system, uh, NFS, right? Version 4.0 and 4.1, NFSS v4, version four. And it's compatible with all the Linux based AMIs for, Linux, for Amazon EC2 instance. So here we have a, a, like a view graphic, the architecture of the EFS. So you have here the last file system, right? You have it here. Then you have a network interface here, and which is the mount target, right? You have another interface, with a network interface here, another mount target, right? And you have another network interface, another mount target. So you have three availability zones with the same file system all the EC2 instances, right, in every in every availability zone can access this file system. That's why it's called a shared file system, right? It's super good. You can have as many uh, EC2 instances as possible, and they can be connected to this file system in a very seamless way. All right. So in the diagram, you have a VPC, right? Remember that VPCs, they, they can spam across availability zones, across multiple availability zones. So you have a mount target like we saw before, right? And then you can connect to that. You create the mount target in one of the subnets, right? None of the two subnets, right? You have the private subnet here and then you create the, 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 the target in one subnet because you, you have a private one, but you have another public subnet here, okay? So Amazon EFS implementation, right? We create, we create the Amazon EC2 resource, right? And launch the Amazon EC2 resource. We create your Amazon file system, right? 
So uh, you can come here and then say EFS, right? And then you can create uh, the EFL file system here. Okay. It's not free. Standard storage, 30 cents per gigabyte. In frequent access storage, that's 0 0.25 per gigabyte, right? And then in frequent 0 0.010 per gigabyte transfer. Provision throughput, six dollars per megabyte, megabit per second. Okay, so it's not free. So you create that file system here, right? You give it a name, and then you put the VVC where you're gonna do that, right? Right? And then you create it. And my, as you can see, is is encrypted by default. You see, it's secure by default, and it's available now. Now it has to be attached. So you attach it here, and then you start. It gives an instruction how to do it in Linux, right? So you would do this, and do that, and then that's the way that you can mount your EFS system on a Linux on on an, on a Linux instance, right? So, and that's what you're gonna get here in this uh, graphic here, okay? So you create your mount targets, right? In the proper subnet, right? You connect your Amazon EC2 instance to the mount targets and then verify this, the resources and protection of your AWS account is there. What do you need to have to have this, to make this possible? You need to have a mount target and in the mount target, you need to have the subnet ID, the security groups, one or more per file system, create in a VPC subnet, one per availability zone, and must be in the same VPC, like here, in this guy here, the same VPC, one per, per availability zone, all okay? right? And the tags, key value pairs, okay? Tags are always, uh, always optional, right? But that's a good thing to have tax is good practice. Okay, so Amazon EFS provides file storage over a network, perfect for big data, right? And analytics, media processing, where file flows, content management, web serving, and home directories. Fully managed service that eliminates storage administration tasks. Accessible from the console, API, or the CLI. Uh, scales up or down as files are added or removed and you pay for what you use. Okay, let me see if I can find here. Uh, I was not going to show it guys, but let me find that uh, in Canvas, because this one is important. Okay. One moment. Let me bring this here. Welcome, this video covers Amazon Elastic File System or Amazon EFS. Amazon EFS implements storage for EC2 instances that multiple virtual machines can access at the same time. It is implemented as a shared file system that uses the network file system. Amazon EFS is a fully managed service that makes it easy to set up and scale file storage in the AWS okay. cloud. Let us not do that. Okay, let me bring this one. That one is about what I just said. Let's, let's have this guy. Hi. Have you always wanted to learn to code but don't know where to start? Would you like to make... All right, so in this lecture, we are going to learn how to use EFS. And for this, we first have to go and create a security group. So we'll go to the security group side. We'll create one, and I'll call it my EFS demo. And it's just a security group for EFS, 
just so we can understand exactly how security groups work for EFS. So for now, inbound, I will have no rules, and outbound, I will have all the rules as well. So it's just a default security group. Here we go. So now my EFS uh, demo right here is, is being created. Next, I'm going to go to services, type in EFS, and open up the EFS file system. As we can see, this is a file storage to use for our EC2 instances, just like I told you that. <laughs> Next, we create the file system, and we have three steps. The first one is to configure it. The second one is optional settings. and the Guys, so you can see that's the old console, right? The third one is to review and create. So we're going to create this in our default VPC. And as I told you, EFS is accessible across three AZ. So we have EUS 1A, 1B, and 1C, all ticked, and they're all going to be created within their own subnets. They will get assigned an automatic IP address, and then I have to assign a security group. Now we're going to remove all the default security group, and I'll just type in the EFS demo security group. So I'll has assign this EFS demo security group to the three subnets, and here we go. We're done. So this is basically saying that our Elastic file system has a security group attached to it, and this is how we could control which instances can talk to it or not. Now let's go next steps. We could add tags if we wanted to, so I'll just call it EFS demo as a name. That sounds good. Here we can choose the performance mode. So as I told you, there is general purpose or max IO, but max IO is when you have thousands or hundreds of EC2 instances, so we'll just use GP for now. The throughput mode, we can choose bursting or provisions. We'll just use bursting, it's the simplest one, but provision will be, we have to specify how many megabytes per second we want. And so for the exam, just know that bursting is enough. And enable encryption is if we wanted to enable the encryption at rest, in which we would choose a KMS master key, for example, AWS slash Elastic file system to encrypt our data at rest. For now, I'll just disable it. I'll make everything more simple. Click on next step and we review everything. It all looks good and click on create file system. Now this can go and take a little bit of time to happen because this will actually provision a file system, the sign -in IP for you. So now the system is created, but as you can see in the bottom, the melt target state is in creating stage. You can also see that for now, we're going to get a file system ID that we'll use later on in this course. We get a metered size, so we get actually the number of, the, the size of all the files we put on our file system and the number of mount targets, so how many AZs it's on. So this looks good. Now we get to have to wait, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and create an EC2 management console. So let's go to my EC2 instances, and I'm going to launch instances. I'm going to launch an Amazon Linux 2, and I'm going to say, okay, it's a T2 micro. Then I'm going to configure instance details, and I'll say this one, I want it to be in US, EU West 1A. Sounds good to me. Then I'll click on next add storage, next add tags, next configure security group, and I'll just create a new security group, I'll call it EC2 for EFS, just because I want to show you that we can have a security group dedicated to these EC2 instances. I'll allow SSH on port 22 so I can um, install stuff on it. Review and launch, then launch and say, I'll use my key pair AWS course. Launch instances, and I will basically launch a very similar instance. So I'll right click and launch more like this. And I'm going to edit basically the AZ I'm in. So in instance details, I'm going to edit the instance details and say, okay, what I want to do is now to launch in EUS 1B, in my subnet EUS 1B. Sounds good. Click on next at storage, next at tags, security group. We're going to reuse that EC2 for EFS security group. So that's perfect. Uh, EC2 for EFS, yeah, perfect. And click on review and launch and launch. I have the key pair and okay. So now what we get out of this is that we have two instances um, 2 T2 micro running in EUS 1A, EUS 1B, and they're all going to have this EC2 for EFS security group, and we're going to configure EFS on both of them. So what I'm going to do is get the public IP and SSH into these instances. So here I can SSH in my first instance. Okay, here we go. And my second instance is right here. I'll also get the public IP, and I will run the SSH command on this one. All right. So I'm in my two instances, they're different public IP, different private IP, they're in different availability zones. And now I have to configure EFS. So for this, we can go to Elastic File System and you can get basically mount instructions from a local VPC. So you can click on it 
And here it shows you exactly how to set up your instances. So the first thing I have to do is to run sudo yum install and then the Amazon EFS utils. It's basically to help us mount the EFS. So I'll just do this and install it on both machines. So it's going to install it. Perfect, it's done. And then you have to mount your file system. So we'll create an EFS directory on our instance. So we'll go and create an EFS directory. I'll create actually a slash uh, of, uh, root at EFS, so slash EFS. So here we go, sudo make tier. I'll do it here too, sudo make tier slash EFS. So now if we go here, we can see that we have an EFS directory that has been created. And the next thing I have to do is to mount using the helper. So as you can see, we can use um, TLS mount option if you wanted to use encryption to talk to EFS. For now, we're fine. And so we'll use this, this command right here, sudo mount minus T EFS. And here is the file system ID. So we have to use that. So let's try it out. And we have to get the file system ID. So let's go back um, to EFS. Oh, but this is the right file system ID because we are in EFS. As you can see, it's gone from here. So let's go back to the mounting instructions and we're going to run this command. And let's see what happens. So we are going to run it and make sure you add slash before the EFS. Press enter. And right now, not much is happening. So let's go back to our here. And as you can see though, my mount target is available. So the problem is this looks like a timeout. And why is it timing out? Well, if you do remember, we have security groups attached, my EFS demo, and right now they don't allow any inbound connection. So we need to allow the security group to get inbound connections from our EC2 instance. So I'm going to go back to my security groups and I'm going to find my EFS demo and inbound rules, I'm going to add a rule and you can actually add any port really, but I'll just add the NFS port and I'll say the source is going to be the EC2 for EFS security group. And I'll say allow traffic from my EC2 instances, allow NFS traffic. So the idea is that now we're saying, okay, these instances who belong to that group will be able to talk to my EFS um, network file system on port 2049. So let's click on save. And now this rule has been added and that should help out. So now let's wait and do a pseudo mount. And now it succeeded. So now the EFS file system is mounted. So I can copy uh, this entire command and paste it right here on the other one. And now it worked as well. And so our EFS file system has been mounted. Now, how do we verify that it worked? Well, how about we go to the EFS directory and here I'll use the sudo user just to make things simple. So I'll go to the EFS directory and use the sudo user. And here I'm just going to say echo hello into a hello.txt file. So if I look at it, now I have a hello.txt file that contains the word hello. And this is an AZ US East 1A. And now let's look at this, we'll do ls. And we find the exact same hello world.txt file, even though this EC2 instance is an EU uh, West 1B. You see how cool that is, guys? So I'll cat hello.txt and we find the exact same content. So the cool thing is that now both these instances into two different AZ have access to the EFS, the volume drive, and they can just have the same files mounted on the same, uh, the same um, endpoint. And so that's really, really cool because we've effectively mounted an NFS drive. And so the really cool thing you need to see here is that we had to troubleshoot a timeout connection using security groups. And that is something that can be asked of you at the exam. But overall, pretty easy to see how things work. I think it is quite natural. And I like the way that you can get your mount instructions directly from this little pop-up. So yes, that's it. You just, you just need to know how to do these things, but it's pretty easy. And now you're an EFS expert. <laughs> that's it. All right, I will see you in the next lecture. Good. That's great, man. That's great. So, <clears throat> you know, one file system, you can have access to the entire, uh, you know, different EC2 instances from different availability zones, they can have access to the same file system. And they can be 50 miles away from each other. That's, that's great. That's what EFS does, you know? Glacier, what's Glacier? Amazon S3 Glacier. It's an archiving service, right? 
Amazon S3 is a data archiving service that is designed for security, durability, and extremely low cost. It's super, super, super uh, uh, cheap. And it has the same durability as, as the standard S3, 11 nines, okay? It supports the encryption of data in transit. Okay, the encryption in S3 in an S3 bucket, a standard S3 is optional. For the case of Glacier is mandatory. It's by default, okay? Whatever you put in a Glacier, in a Glacier vault will be, will be encrypted. Right, it supports data in, tra in, tr in transit and rest through secure socket, socket layer, SSL, uh, or transport layer security T TLS. The vault lock feature enforces compliance through a policy, so you can lock the vault uh, for compliance. And you know that when there is a, an inspection or an audit audit in your company, this is good for auditing because no one can touch those uh, objects inside the vault. Extremely low cost design works for, well for long-term archiving. It provides three options for access to archives, expedited, standard, and bulk retrieval, time regions for a few minutes to several hours. Okay, so expedited, for example, are typically made available within one to five minutes. Don't forget that. Expedited, one, to five minutes, minutes, and it's the highest cost. It's the one that costs the most, okay? Because it's faster. It's faster than the other two. Now, one moment. Standard, it is between three and five hours, okay? It's less time than expedited, more time than buck, okay? So here, from one to five minutes, here from three to five hours, and here from five to 12 hours, okay? So you can choose whatever uh, retrieval um, option you want, and then based on that, you're gonna pay for that, all right? And of course, uh, you know, the, the speed, the time it's gonna take is gonna be different the three of them. Again, one to five minutes, one to five minutes, three to five hours, five to 12 hours. Okay, very important. Storage service for low cost data archiving and long term backup. You can configure lifecycle archiving of Amazon S3 content to Amazon S3 Glacier, right? Retrieval options right here standard, three to five hours, buck, five to 12 hours, expedited, one to five hours. Okay, you have Amazon S3 bucket here. After 30 days, you send it to our Glacier Archive. And after five years, do delete it. Guys, what is this? Can you, can you tell me what this is? This here? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Life cycle. It's a life cycle policy. Call red. Right? This, this varies. This is just an example. You can do whatever you want, right? Amazon S3 Glacier use cases, media assets archiving, you know, S3 is for media assets, you know, S3 Glacier is for archiving of those media assets, healthcare information archiving, you know, you want to keep uh, the, the patient's records for um, a long time, five years, something like that. Um, I think uh, as, as to, as per HIPAA uh, policy, I think you have to keep the, the, the files for five years and then you can dispose of that. I'm not sure about that, but I've heard that. Regulatory and compliance archiving, scientific data archiving, TGA preservation, and magnetic tape replacement. So things that need to be stored for a long time, right? long-term uh, archiving, a Glacier is the, the guy for that, okay? Among us three Glacier, you have here RESTful web services, Java or .NET SDKs, Amazon S3 with lifecycle policies. So to store and access data in S3 Glacier, you can use the AWS console, right? However, only a few operations such as creating and deleting vaults and creating and managing archive policies are available in the console. 
for almost all other operations and interactions with Amazon S3 Glacier, you must use either the, the Amazon S3 Glacier REST API, the AWS Java, or net, like it says here, .NET SDKs, or the CLI. Okay. You can also use a lifecycle policy to archive data into Amazon S3 Glacier. Next, we will learn uh, about lifecycle policies. You already know about that, guys. So that's like a policy we have here, enabled you to delete or move objects based on age, right? So after 30 days, you're gonna move this guy's preview to that MP4, to standard IA, right? And then from 60 days, after 60 days, you're gonna move it to Amazon S3 Glacier. And then after 365 days, is deleted, right? Just an example, it doesn't have to be like that. Storage comparison. Uh, data volume, no limit, no limit for S3 and S3 Glacier. There's no limit, it's unlimited. Average latency, milliseconds, and that takes minutes and hours. Remember, this, this is given to you immediately. This one, you know, expedited one to five minutes. Standard is three to five hours, and block is five to 12 hours. Don't forget that, right? Item size per object is five terabytes maximum for S3 and 40 terabytes maximum for S3 uh, Glacier, all right? This one has the, high co the highest cost, the high, higher cost, because you know, it, it's gonna be given to you immediately, right? So that's, that's why it's, it's more expensive. This one takes more time, right? Bill request, put, copy, post, list, and get. This is for upload and retrieval, because basically archiving is for retrieval, you know? I mean, who's going to access this file after, I don't know, 60 days or 70 days, you know? And this, for, for the retrieval pricing, you know, this is, you know, uh, less expensive than this one. This costs more, okay? So that's what I said before, that this one's going to be more expensive for retrieval, okay, than this one. But the requests, you have more requests here, so you may you know, you're gonna pay more, it's a higher cost with this guy. Okay. So basically, basically going to the object is gonna cost you more than coming from the object, which is S3 Glacier, it costs more with S3 Glacier coming from the bucket. Server-side encryption, you know, um, with S3 is optional, with uh, Glacier is by default, okay? Uh, and I show you here, guys, I show you in this guy here. Um, I think I show you here. Right. If I show you here in the S3 bucket here. Guys, do you like the video about S uh, EFS? Do you like it? Yes. That's great, huh? So here, when you have the bucket, you click on the bucket, they can come here to properties and then just come to default encryption. It's already encrypted here. So whatever I upload in this bucket is gonna be encrypted, okay? So this is optional, right? This is optional, is default, uh, default encryption is this one, but I have to select this and to make it, a, to enable it. If I don't do anything by default, it's not encrypted. But in the case of the, the, in the case of Glacier, the vault is already encrypted. So everything is encrypted by default, right? So you must enable server-side encryption to be able to have this encrypted, okay? Security with Amazon S3 bucket, uh, control access with IM, right? Amazon S3 Glacier encrypts your data with um, advanced encryption standard 256, right? And Amazon S3 Glacier manages your keys for you. So it's, it's managed for you, the keys with KMS, key management service, right? So the, the key takeaways, Amazon S3, uh, S3 Glacier is a data archiving service that is designed for security, durability, and extremely low cost. Guys, what is the durability of S3 Glacier? What is the durability of S3 Glacier? 
11 nines. 11 nines. And what is the durability of S3 standard? The same. The same, okay. What is the availability of S3 standard? Immediate. I'm sorry? You said standard, immediate, right? No, the availability of the S3 standard class. How many nines? Is Amaro here? Amaro. Is Amaro here? Amaro's an expert in AWS. Amaro, are you here? Doesn't look like it. All right, guys. S3 standard has an availability of four nines, 99.99. .99. Okay. And how about S3 standard IA? How many? Three. I'm sorry? Three. Three, stand, three nines? So you're saying? Yeah. Yes. It's 99.9. .9. Okay. Good. So Amazon S3 Glacier pricing is based on region. It's, a, it's extremely low cost design, works well for long-term archiving, and the service is designed for provide 11 nines of durability for object, objects, okay? So let me see if I have, um, see if I have a short video here for it. Because the one that are there are in, in okay, there's one here, but it's three years ago. The problem is that as AWS changed the console. I want to find something that is, you know, um, that is, you know, newer, right? That is AWS tutorial. Me, today we will video. Me, we will see AWS as hard to understand. Okay, um, guys, I'm gonna post uh, one, but is like 12 minutes. Something probably that you can watch later. Uh, oh, that's not the one. I have another one here. Um, you know, um, maybe. Let me post it on Slack so you guys can watch it later. Okay. So it's this one here, right? And that's going to give you a little more, uh, a better idea of. Glacier. Okay. Storage case study. So a data analytics company for travel for travel sites must store billions of storage events per day. They use the data analytics services that are in the diagram. The following diagram illustrates their architecture. So they have an Amazon API gateway. They have Amazon Kinesis which is for real real time uh, data processing, right? AWS Lambda, Amazon Elastic Container Service. They have Amazon Kinesis here, Amazon Kinesis Firehose. This is the one that transforms the data that is ingested and sends it to a storage. What storage do you think it goes here? What storage do you think is goes here? It's going to come. Which one? Eleven. Nope. S3. 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 Is that tomorrow? Okay, S3. Okay, S3. Because Firehose transforms the data, right? Processes the data and send it to S3 bucket. Is that's one of the endpoints? when it will send the, the data, okay? A collaboration software company processes emails for enterprise customers. They have more than 
250 customers and more than half a million users, the most store per petabytes of data for their customers. The following diagrams illustrates their architecture. What do you think is the storage here? Yes. Which one? EBS. EBS. Yes. It says petabytes. Petabytes. Big data. Um, I guess I see S3. No. Well, S3 has no limit, so yeah, it's yeah. possible. Petabytes, let's go back here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well. See? Mm. A financial data processing and consulting company must store large amounts of data for compliance reasons. They use Amazon Kinesis for processing the data and Amazon Redshift for analysis. The following diagram illustrates their architecture, right? What do you think is the storage there? Glacier? Yeah. Hmm? So Redshift, what do you think it is? Compliance, gotta be EBS. What else? Yes. Yes, yes it's optimized, okay? So that will be EVS. Okay. We'll go back to that. Uh, Red chip is that a warehouse? Is it that a warehouse? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up here. And today we cover a lot of things um, as for storage. So in this module, you learn how to identify the different types of storage. What are the different types of storage? Can you mention one, please? Can you mention one? EFS. S3. S3. EBS. EBS. Glacier. And Glacier. Glacier. And Glacier, right? Explain Amazon S3. Can, you, can someone tell me real quick in a few words what Amazon S3 is? It's an object storage. It's an object. Up to level storage. Good, good, good. What is the availability? Not yet. Not just when you need it. For for the standard, what's the availability? What's, what's the availability? How many nines? How many nines for 11 the? nines? 11. That's, that's, 11. that's durability. That's uh, durability. Okay. Right. For standard, is four nines, and for standard IA, three. is three. Okay. Um, is, is S3 limited? No. Okay. What's this, the maximum size of an object? Five, five terabytes. Five terabytes. Five terabytes. Okay, good. What is Amazon EBS? Black storage level. Black storage level. Store. Black. Store. Not storage. Store. Store. Oh, okay. Store black storage. Is a block storage. It's a block, elastic block store. And it is a block storage service, okay? But it stands for elastic block store, okay? Okay. Good. Very good. What are the four different types of volumes that we saw in class? Cold. Cold is one of them, yes. General purpose. General purpose. What else? IOPS optimize. Sorry. Provision IOPS. Provision IOPS. And the other one? <coughs> Throughput optimization. Throughput optimized. 
throughput optimized. Okay. What is EF EFS? Elastic file Elastic storage. file system. Elastic file system. system. Yep. Okay. Is this share or not share? Yes. Shared. How many availability zones can we have? Three, right? Three. Three. Right? What scale is it? How many, how, what, 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 what's the size in what scale? Heads of eight, petabytes. Petabytes, petabytes. Okay, good, good. Okay, Amazon S3 Glacier. What is the durability? Nine 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 eight eleven nine f eleven nines very good. What are the three different options of retrieval? Uh, region expedite expedited uh, uh, standard. And how, long does it take, how long does it take with the expedited retrieval option? How long? Five minutes. Five minutes. Between one and five um, minutes. What is the other one? The seconds, the seconds are fastest. The what is the other one? Three to five hours. Yeah, but what is the, the, the option? Standard. Standard. Standard, three to five hours. And the last one, the, the slowest one? Bulk. Bulk. Bulk, and how many hours? Should be five and 12 hours. Between five and 12 hours. So guys, knowledge check, don't forget that. So what is the answer here? A company wants to store data that is not frequently accessed. Keyword, not frequently accessed. So what are we gonna think right away? Glacier. Okay, not only Glacier. Remember, old, remember, uh, remember standard IA? If we could access standard IA, remember, infrequently accessed, we have to continue reading, right? So, what is the best and cost cost effective solution that you should be considered? Then, if it is cost effective, what is the one? Glacier. EBS. You think so? Glacier. Glacier. I'm stuck into glacier. It's free. Glacier? Yeah, it's glacier, yeah. Glacier is the most cost effective one. It's the cheapest one. Now, frequently accessed, we can think about glacier, right? Oh, it's true. And also standard IA, right? Which is infrequently accessed too. But then you have to continue reading the question. And of course, standard IA is not here. So we can we can disregard it. Okay, so the answer is Glacier. Okay, good. What time is it? I think that we can go ahead and, and schedule the exam. How about that? All right. So guys, I want someone to volunteer, right? I want someone to volunteer and, um, and a moment. I want someone to volunteer and share your screen, please. And that person is going to be uh, just, you know, um, guiding the other guys how to um, do that. So I'm gonna send the code to each person. So you hear that, are you on Slack? You're on Slack, right? Yeah. I'm gonna send you a direct message and I'm gonna give you your code, okay? And that's that's your code for the exam, okay? That's a, a voucher that's gonna make your exam free. So now I'm gonna do with Os Ossi Laborde, you there? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
go. Austin, there you go. Code is there. Now I'm going to give it to Ruben Martinez. Ruben Martinez. I'm here. There you go. I'm going to give it to Anusha now. Anusha, are you there? Anusha, you there? Uh, yes, Professor. OK. So, uh, send to you. Thank you. I'm going to give it to now. It's going to be Davine now. I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Yes, yes, I'm going to send to you. Thank you. Yeah, send to you as well. Now I'm going to send it to Delia. Delia, send to you. Now I'm going to send you to Daydiana. Daydani, I'm sorry. Uh, are you on Slack, Daydiana? Daydani? Yes. I don't see you here. Oh. Did you accept the invitation before? You're not on Slack. Yes, I did. Oh. Uh... I don't see you on slide. Okay, I'm gonna send it to Edward now. Edward is. Edward, I send it to you. I'm going to send it to So now I'm going to send it to um, Eduardo Mulet. So Eduardo Mulet. No. The next one I'm gonna send it to Fernando Mendoza. Fernando sends oh. you. Next one, I'm gonna send it to Hilda Alvarez, who sent it, Harold Guzman. You got yours, Hilda, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Harold Guzman, uh, send it to you, send it to you. Now I'm gonna do the next one. It's gonna be Elin Abad. Abad. Okay, sent to you. Got it, thank you. Thank you very much. Now the other one is uh, Leslie. Send Leslie. Okay. Next one. I'm going to send it to Luis Ernesto.
Send to Lisa Nestor. Okay, next, I'm gonna send it to Maria Orozco. Maria Orozco. Okay. Maria Orozco. Send to you, Maria. Next one, came okay, Michael Montavan. Okay, sent to you, Michael. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next one is my Phipps. Yep, Phipps. Okay. Send to you. Got it. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, next one is. Uh, Mohan. Mohan. Yes, Professor. Yeah. yeah. Sent to you, Mohan. Thank you. Next, I'm going to send it to Peter, Peter, Peter St. Paul. Send to you, Peter St. Next, I'm going to send it to Wemba Maceda. Do you have my update email? No, I'm, I'm going to send it to your email. It's on Slack. Okay, on site. Thank you very much. Uh, send to you. Thank you. Okay. Next person is going to be uh, Juan Martinez. I sent it to you already, right? Yes, it's done. Loring. Uh, now, Loring, uh, Loring, I'm sending it to you right now. Send to you, Loring. Okay. Thank you. I got it. Got it. Okay, good. And the next person is Dieva. Okay, Dieva. Dieva, send to you. Okay, good. So I guess that's it. Anyone else in the classroom that didn't get that? Anyone else? Um, they done it. Um, I couldn't get in the Slack. I was looking for the email. I was confused. I was thinking you sent it to the email. I didn't. So are you? Are you? Are you the, the invitation. Are you on Slack now? No, no. Okay. Can you give me your email, please? Yes, it's uh. They from how do you spell that? D E Y F R A N D E Y D E Y F R A N Okay uh, 2017 at gmail.com. 
Okay, again, D as in David, E as in Edward, Y as in yellow, S as in Sam, R as in Robert. F, F, of Frank. F. Oh, F, F. Yes. Okay, one moment. The T E Y F friend and then 2017 at gmail.com. Yes, let me know if you get it, please. Okay, uh, Harold, for that, you will have to uh, request that, but you will not be able to, um, you will not be able to schedule the exam today because that's a special accommodation. You will have to call a uh, person and schedule the exam over the phone. No, okay, don't worry. Thank you, Professor. Okay, so um, who else? I mean... Mohan, it's 5.41 a.m. there, where you are. Yes, yep. Wow, man. You're taking a class at 5. Wow, man. So, you, you, so your class started at 2 a.m., more or less, right? 2 a.m., like maybe 3 a.m.? 3 a.m., yep. Oh, wow, man. That's I am motivated. That's sacrifice. That is... Real sacrifice. All right, so. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, you're there? I sent you the, the my email in chat because I'm, I didn't get it yet. Well, I see the in front 2017 now. Uh, I see you now. Where? Okay, okay. <laughs> What's your email? What's your email? I texted you. Where? Uh, on Zoom. Why do you send me a text? It's in the chat. It's in the chat in the, in the text. Server. Okay, just give me one second. The chat. Okay, I want someone to volunteer, right? Someone to volunteer and, no. you know, to volunteer so that we can scale the exam for that person. And at the same time, all the students can scale the, can schedule the exam as well. Please, someone volunteer and share the screen. I will share. I can share. This is Jill. Okay, good. So I sent you the voucher, um, Dejania. By email? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Just one more here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see your screen. Uh, host disable participant screen sharing. Let me make that possible. One moment. So, does everybody have a training AWS training account? Without that, you cannot schedule the exam. Okay, now you can share your screen. Give that. Now, we're going to schedule the exam. Is anyone here taking the AWS Solutions Architect uh, next class on the 12th? Anyone here? Yes. yes. I am. Yes. Okay. So we're trying to schedule the exam for Tuesday evening. So let's see Tuesday evening. That's going to be, uh, we're finishing on the 9th. The 12 be Monday, 13. Is anyone here for the class of Java? Yes. 
Okay. Oh, wow. So let's try to do it for the weekend of the ninth. Okay. For the next week. The weekend of the ninth. Okay. Yes. Let's try to do that. Okay. So go to the um, AWS training, Gilda. Is Gilda or Hilda? Hilda. Hilda, right? Uh -huh. So AWS training. Okay. So scroll down, please. No. Scroll no. down. That right there, that one. Okay, good. So now you're going to uh, certification, uh, signing. Yes, choose, uh, just do it. Don't do it so fast. So everybody can be at the same pace. Yeah. Is, is everybody I'm here? Waiting. Is everybody here, please? Yeah. 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 All right, please speak yeah. up. Don't, don't get behind, okay? So when you're done, when you have the date, please, in the channel that says, uh, exam date, put the date there, okay? So click on there, click there. Now you can use your personal Amazon account, your personal Amazon account. Please log in. Oh my God, since that we have a problem. Change the password recently. Uh oh. Be careful, they can lock your account. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Right. Please. And we schedule for Monday in the morning? Yes, that's possible too. Yeah, I'm checking if you don't have a job, guys, if you don't have a job, you can schedule it for, for any day before Tuesday, any day in the morning. What Tuesday? The ninth? No, the twelfth. The thirteenth. The thirteenth. Okay, okay. I'm gonna schedule. It's through Pearson, correct? Yes, but let's do it together, please. Um, I'm trying to do it together, but it's stopping me from going through. So, can you put in the the step by step? Can you write it down so we can do it step by step? Um, can someone write it down? Because I don't. Uh, where are you now? Where are you now? Right now, I'm trying. It says training and certification. Okay. Okay. It says sign into a console. I'm going in. Uh, Is that the I, wrong one? Did, did okay. I, can you exit? Can you exit there? Uh, okay. Jill? I did. You create here that you are uh, creating the profile now? Yeah. Okay. You don't have a profile. Okay. The language, just put the language. In. No, no, you don't. Have, that's not. That's not mandatory. The language, just type English. Or just select English. The country, the United States. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, United States. Time zone. It's gonna be New York. Eastern Standard. Okay. But that's wait, wait, wait. That's a different one. What do you choose there? Standard time. Yeah, it's just America and I don't know something else. Uh, just just type the word New York. New York. Oh, the American. I don't think I can type that. EST is New York time as well. Yeah, that's the one. All right. Yeah, you have to make an account. Everybody has to make an account in AWS.training. Okay. Please do that real quick, AWS.training. Follow the prompts and open that account. And just like you said, we can use our normal uh, AWS account, right? No, no, no. Your personal Amazon account. Yeah, yes, yes, my, my own personal account. I mean, we can use it within AWS training. Uh, yes, AWS dot training. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. I mean, can you exit again, uh, Hilda, so we can do it again? Okay, thank you. So let's go to guys, AWS dot training, and then just remove the certification word from the URL. On the URL, just remove the certification word. Okay, and then this is where we have to be. Okay, 
That's AWS job training. Okay. And right now, we click on my account, uh, certification, right? Certification, that's right, certification. Okay, and now we come, scroll down and we, we click on go to your account, right? And right now, are we here, guys? Are we all here? Yes. Yeah. Who's that? Not here? yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Not yet. So where are you guys now? Just typing in I the, had, I, I was the creating one a password. Account. Okay. I was creating a different account, and I logged out. I got it out, and I try, I'm trying to use my personal account. My personal AWS account? No, 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 no. It's not your AWS account. It's your you your your Amazon personal account. Amazon. Do you have an Amazon account? Do you buy things on Amazon? My my wife does, but I can use that one, right? First? You can use wife, no. no, no, no. You use yours because this is your certification. The certificate. Okay, I understand. I'm so, I, so I, don't, I don't have an Amazon like Prime account or anything like that. You have to create it because when you do certification, your name must match, must match the one in the exam. I understand. Okay. It will show your wife's name, and that doesn't match your certification. It has to be your personal Amazon account. Edward Diaz just posted the link on Slack. Does anybody know the time zone? The time zone is New York. Steve, yeah. understand the time. Schedule now. Yeah, let's wait for uh, is everybody there where Hilda is? Yeah. Almost there. Almost there. Yes. Hey guys, uh yes, I want you to uh yes, we have to wait because I want everybody to get this done. And this is right quick. This is right quick, guys. This is right quick. I believe 13 and 17 year olds are taking exams. Okay, guys, let's proceed. Let's continue. Let's schedule a new exam. Okay. Now scroll down. Scroll down. Now let's find. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, can you scroll down? That's it. Okay. Uh, did you click on request new exam? Yeah, it just doesn't go anywhere. Okay, scroll down. Demographic is incomplete. Well, okay, right. just re finish the demographics, please. You need to finish that. Something is, is missing there. Just put any address there, whatever you want. Uh, try to put the real one, okay? Um, okay, let's try to finish the demographics there. Um, 
Okay, I, I was finally able to log in. I created an account. Mm -hmm. It says confirm. Learn, compute. So I search for training exam or print exam? What do you mean? Okay, just put whatever you want. This doesn't matter. We're a student, organization, uh, you know, anything, anything you want, startup, whatever. Okay, let's complete this, guys. How many years? Anything you want, less than one year. Uh, just put there, probably compute the uh, database, say storage, whatever you want there. Um, continue. Uh, now that's, that's not required. That's not required, but the next one is, the next one is, well, that one is required. Just put yes. If you're authorizing, uh, yes. Uh, well, if you want to. And yes, you're authorizing your WS to access your WS history contact. Okay. Update, uh, confirm. That's fine. Now, now you can proceed. Okay, just click here to proceed to your original destination. Okay. Now you can request exam. No, 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 no accommodations. Go back. Look for the exam down. It should be down somewhere there. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay, now it's going to schedule is the first one. AWS certified cloud partitioner schedule with prison view. This is uh, view. that one. Yes. Click on that. Okay, the country are required to schedule an exam. So, um, the country is rare, right? Oh, you're missing the phone number. Yeah, yeah, the phone number is important. Just confirm that. Okay, good. Let's, let's wait. Okay, at home or office? Right, good, continue. Then you can Professor. do- you can do the pre-check later. Yes, yes, one moment. You yeah. mentioned in the first slide, you have, or we have an option to have like a 30 minute more. We are not. Yes, 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 yes. But if you do that, you cannot schedule the exam today. You will have to call them, be probably 30 minutes or an hour on the phone waiting for them, and then schedule an exam. So it's up to you guys if you need an extra 30 minutes. I believe you don't need it. Okay, but okay. Okay. you guys- Not, do... Okay, no problem. Yeah, go ahead, next. Now agree, just check all the check boxes. I need my life away. Yeah, and then uh, next, I'll uh, continue, whatever it says there. My firstborn child. Next. Okay, now you're gonna choose uh, Indonesian. No, English, I'm sorry, <laughs> English. All right, uh, we continue, next. Okay, now we're going to, we're okay, continue, next. Okay, now we're going to choose English, okay, next. And now we're going to choose the day. Okay, let's do it for Saturday 10. All right, guys, let's shoot for Saturday 10. And then you can choose anytime you want. Okay, Saturday 10, let's do that. Can you go back, can you go back, Gila, to see if there's a Sunday available? Uh, Sunday's available? Yes, so guys, let's do it Sunday, Saturday 10 or Sunday 11, okay? So any day, because that's a Sunday, you have, I mean, you can do it any day. The exam is only one hour, 30 minutes. So it's not gonna be that long. Okay. Now we're going to uh, continue to check out, right? Now we're going to accept that. So there is the policy, accept that. And now we're going to enter the voucher where it says add a voucher. No, 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 go up, go up. It says out, add a voucher promo code. Click on that and add the voucher that I gave you. I don't think it lets you paste. You will have to probably copy it manually. 
Okay, you can try that, but it might, let, might not let you paste it. Okay. Um, let me. Okay. Yeah, you can paste it. So just hit apply. And boom, your exam is zero dollar. Good. So you can do next. Are you sure you put the correct email and everything? Because now you're gonna get a confirmation to your email. Yeah. I'll make sure that your name is your name. Okay. It has to match your ID because you have to show an ID with these guys. You have to take a picture of your computer uh, and your ID back and front. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. Lauren, is the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Okay, so now you're booked, right? You're booked for Sunday 11. Please grab that and paste it. Just go up, go up, go up, go, go scroll down, please. No, 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 not the entire thing, not the entire thing. Just, you know, what it says appointment. Just scroll down, please. What it says appointment, you see appointment. That information only, Sunday 11 at, at that time. That's all I need, guys. That's all I need. So you paste it now on Slack in the channel thing. Are you going to put oh. it on uh, Slack? I was going to put it in my calendar. So on Slack, you go to the way, wait, wait, wait. You say, you say this channel. No, 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 the channel. The channel that says AWS exam dates. Put your name. Put your name to know this you. Uh, you don't have to put your name. It's there in on Slack. It's going to oh. show on Slack. So enter. I know it's you, Hilda. Okay, guys? Okay. So, okay. Is anyone else that having a problem? That wants yes, to yeah. You're going at 12.45 in the morning? No, that's p.m. Person. No, that's a.m. That's oh, in the middle of the night. A.m. Yes, yes. My case, I will do on Monday because on Sunday I have work. Okay, do you have to work on Saturday? No. Can you try no. Saturday? I was thinking. I was thinking up one day more for studying. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. Anyone okay. else? One, did, did one question. I was able to get as far as it's asking me to update my um. Can you uh, share your screen, Wayne? Can you share your screen? Through the phone. Let me see if I can go into the other one. Let me get in through the through the computer real quick. Is this being recorded that we can go back and, and finish? Yes, it? It's being recorded. They kept going, taking me back to where I had to correct and put some information, like it, it erased the information, and I had to go back. Yes, yes, you, it's, it's being recorded. As far as I know, I haven't stopped the recording. Yeah, it's still recording. Yeah, anyone else that wants to share the screen, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven students have uh, done this? I'm waiting on the recording on to do it again because it's not working for me. I'm okay. working on it, working on it. Okay, can you, can you share your screen? Can I go? Yes. Bye. Thank you. Uh, if you're finished, you can go, please. Um, I'm on the section that says upcoming exam. So request exam accommodation, okay. you said? You want to share the screen? Oh, I'm on two, two laptops. <laughs> okay. Uh, but if I don't see what you're doing, I cannot exactly. I, I think I'll share my screen. Yes, please. So Leslie, can you please post? Did you post the date? That's where I'm at, right, right there. Do it now, please. Do it. Yes, thank you. Um, you share the screen. Nice. Now you. Well, gonna... I'm sharing the screen. Yes, yes. Now you click on. Can you scroll down, please? OK. Uh, I think that, yes, scroll down. The first, the very first one is Cloud Partitioner. You see there? OK. So, that's right. You click there. Yeah, that's fine. 
that's the place. Now you're going to be brought to Pearson View platform. Okay. Nice. Choose home or office. Nice. The pre-check, you can do a letter. Don't forget, guys, to do the pre-check before the exam, the day of the exam. Okay, that's very important. Now you're gonna uh, check all those check boxes. And now you're gonna check English. And then next. Now you're going to see the details of the exam and then next. Now you're going to select English, continue next. And now you're going to select the date and then you can select 10 or 11. Yes, go ahead. You're gonna um, choose a, any day that is any moment or any time that is best for you. And now you're going to proceed to check out. And now just grab the, the, the voucher, just accept this policy. Uh, and then, then grab the voucher from Slack and you'll paste it where, where it says voucher, add a voucher. Oh my God, what did I just press? No. Happened. You <laughs> started my camera. Wait. Okay, Stop click. click. That. You can go. Uh, I think that. Yeah. Um, no, no. Is the you see the last that one? That one is the page, right? What happened? Okay, so go to uh, that and then just put the code and then add voucher code. Good. Add the voucher there and then apply. Nice. Then it became zero, becomes zero now. Nice. You click on next. And then you confirm the details. Almost there. Fine. You see the time, your name, everything. And then click submit order. Awesome. Nice. Thank now you. What it says, what it says appointment, just paste that part in on Slack. Uh, that one, exactly that, that section there. Just copy that and paste it on Slack. Appreciate that. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Just in the channel, in the channel where it says exam yeah. date. Um, well, can I share my screen real quick? Yes. Thank you, Davine. Thank you. Okay, welcome. go ahead, please. You get, you're free to go, Davine. So we could take it at any time? Uh, any time that day? Yes, any time you want. I'm not, I'm not going to be there. It's going to be a proctor from AWS. So uh, yes, choose whatever you think is best there. Enterprise, a startup, whatever. Okay. And then you choose whatever AWS products you want. Okay. You know, that's good. Uh, any anything you want there? This tell me Sunday is not available. Okay, um, they that you choose a different time. You choose. No, the date Sunday is not available at all. Oh, it's not available anymore. Okay, Davin, are you there? Okay. Yeah, I'm here, and okay. I did the no. New York one. Okay, so so. Now it's going to be a little difficult to change that. I think that you can reschedule, but if you can go with this time, you can do it. Just look for this time. Right now, this time is AST time. The change, change the new, new York. Okay, AST time is the same as this one. It's the same as, as Easter Standard Time. Oh, thank change, God. Change the New York. Thank you. Yes, yeah, New York. It's Atlantic Standard Time is 8.39 p.m. right now. The so same what time is the New York? The same as this one too. Okay, it's, it's not a Sunday is not available under that one. Uh, maybe choose Saturday because many people have chosen Sunday already. 
Okay. Um, who's this? Ruben, can you scroll down? Yes. I finally got to this page. Okay. Can you scroll down real quick? And choose a schedule with Pearson, the, the first one, first one. Cloud Professor, it says Sunday, 6 Yes. It's um, afternoon and not available, only morning 6.15 is available. Okay, can you do it at that time? On Saturday? That's the only time that is available? For me, yeah. yeah. Can you do it on Monday in the morning? Monday, I'm going to work. Let me see if, if, if Sunday at 7. Let me see. Okay, it says Sunday at 7.30 p.m. is available. Okay. I could do it that time. Yes, yes. So I schedule with Prince on uh, Romain. Click on there. And then you're going to choose home or office. Home or office. Okay. Click on that. Okay. And then next. 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 You can do the pre-check later. Next. And then agree. Just check all the, those check boxes. And then um, click on that. Next. Why is it telling me to get um, additional exam selection? OK. Um, just let me finish with him, and then we're going to okay. share the screen with you. Uh, next. Next, um, let's see now, next. Okay, let's see if there's something available there on, on the 10th or 11th. Okay, click on that on the 10th, on the 10th, 11th. Let's see what there's something there. Okay, we have a, a lot of times there. So you can choose any one you want. We'll click on that, okay. Now we're going to proceed to check out. And just grab, just accept that policies. Scroll down. Okay. Set the policy. Quick question. If I had to change the day, could I? The day? Yeah, the day. If I had to change it from Sunday to Saturday or a different day. You want to do it now? Uh, yes. Okay. You can cancel that and go back. Okay. Can you go back? Uh, let me see. Do you have a go back there? Okay. Then uh, remove the exam. Remove the exam and do it again. Yes. Okay. Uh, now you know how to get there. Okay. Return to dashboard. Let me share the screen with the uh, with the other student. Okay. Uh, sure. Can thank you, you. Can you share the screen now. So who was the person that was uh, having issues? It was me. Okay, can you please I'm, I'm, I'm changing computers, so I'll be able to share it with you. Okay. So Professor, uh, do we have any target date before that we should uh, complete this exam? Okay, because I have uh, some work on the weekend. So any day where you uh, see that it should be the day where we cannot take Can you take it? Can you take it? Um, so right now it's Saturday, right? There? Yeah. yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can take it. Um, what time do you finish yeah. on Sunday? Because I, I'm not available on 10th and 11th. I have some projects, so I'm kind of busy with that. Okay. Um, then in your case, you can take it on the 12th. How about 13th? Uh, is 13th good? I'm sorry? <clears throat> 13th of October. October 30. 
13, one, three, yeah. All 13, yes, yes. Yeah. Sounds good, I'll go for that, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So when you're back there. Uh, yes, can I show you my screen? Yes, please. Okay, choose the cloud petitioner, yes. Okay, home on office. Real quick, you know what to do now. Next, 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 next. Uh, check all the boxes, check boxes. Okay, and then you continue next. English, next. Uh, next. Next. Okay, choose the date now. So now you can choose uh, the day, 10. One of the 10, right? Here's the thing. Um, this is a hard weekend for me. Um, what do you recommend? During the, week, during the week or could it be the same? Okay. Uh, can you try? Can you try? Uh, that's too. That's that's too long. Okay. Okay. okay um, can you try? Can you try the nine when we finish the class? After we finish the class. Maybe? The thing is, um, I'm gonna be taking care of the kids. Okay. Uh, my wife leaves. Um, can you do twelve? Can you do twelve in the evening? I, yes. Yes, I can do twelve. Yes. The twelve in the evening. Yeah. Great. Great. I can do twelve. Yes. My wife will be back by then. Um, uh, anytime here, right? And this is, I can take it at home, right? That's why different yes. time? Yes. Continue for Chicago. And then just move down a sec that. Now you're going to grab that code from Slack. Now get the code from Slack. And then, you know, copy and put it there which says add voucher. Is the one that says prison. Prison. Okay, that one. Yeah. So add voucher, a promo code. There's a link up, up, up. Yes. Add it there. And then apply it. Then next. And then submit order. And then you are booked. Good. Can you scroll down? Awesome. <laughs> Just copy that. Says appointment. What is this appointment thing here? Appointment. Uh, copy that. What is this appointment? Monday, October. Uh, Just copy that and put, paste it on Slack in the channel for the dates. Yeah, that one. Copy and paste it on Slack. On Slack. In the channel, it says exam dates. No, not there. Exam dates. The second one, that one. And then you copy there and paste it and just enter. That's it. You too, Leslie. Have a great night. Now uh, you're free to go, Ruben. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, now, uh, uh, hey. what, what, what is your name? Warren, right? Loring, Loring. Loring. 
Can you share it? I'm now? here. I can't share it because I couldn't pull it up the with the um, other computer because I think it logs in into one. So Zoom wouldn't allow me. But I think um, I, I've got to the part of the amount is saying um, certification cloud practitioner. Mm -hmm. And then con uh, click continue. Yes. It won't allow me. It has a red dot on it. That, that I can, if I don't see, I cannot. Know. Yeah, I know. Hold on a second. Maybe you can take a picture of your image and paste it on Slack. Okay. In the general channel. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Uh, Dieva, how are you? Did you? Did you? Could you do it? Maria Orozco Peterson. Yes, I did. I okay, can you can you post it? Can you post it there? In the channel. Let me see. Juan, you see there? Yep. Hey, Professor. Okay, the 13, yep. 13 or 17? 13, yeah. I changed it to 13th of October, 1-3. Okay, did you post that? Yep, I did post. Okay, good. Hey, Professor, it's Mike. Real quick, I was just going to ask him um, about Friday night. It's okay to book after class? That's what yeah, I was going to yeah. ask. Yeah, if you feel comfortable, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to take it sooner than later. Um, so class goes till normal time or? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be normal time. Okay, great. Thank you much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Hamal Dieva, could you do it? Post it please. Hey, Dania, how about you? How about you, Mike Phipps? Mario Orozco? Yeah, that was me. That was. So I'm having not uh, Dania is having problem. I already posted my uh, my date, so I can go ahead and leave. Yes, please. All right, no problem. Thank you. Have a good one. Good job.